Everyone has their own ways of preparing for doomsday. Some people would rather not think about it while the world burns down around them. Others have a spot reserved in one of the most luxurious doomsday bunkers in the world. One family in a small New England town is stockpiling honeybees. And at the very top of the planet, in the frigid temperatures of the Arctic, a select few maintain a vault that could contain humanity's last hope for survival. Let's start with the best of the best, or at least the richest of the rich. What do the super rich get when they buy into the Opadum complex in the Czech Republic? The answer is pretty much anything they want. The architects of the Opidum have not only created a doomsday shelter, but a doomsday paradise. The complex sits in a quiet valley protected by natural features and a solid concrete wall. The walls are so high that the only way to see inside of the complex is by aerial view or entering through one of the secret entrances. The property itself is 323,000 square feet in size, but that doesn't even count most of the living space deep underground. There are plenty of things to do on the surface of the compound. But if the outside world is irradiated from nuclear war or a supervolcano blocks the sun for hundreds of years, the residents of Hopi Doom will spend most of their time in the two underground levels of this doomsday community. Each of these levels is 77,500 square feet, with 13-foot high ceilings. So how did the super rich prepare for their doomsday scenario? By adding all of the comforts they now enjoy to their secure underground community at Hopi Doom. To keep their clients comfortable and ensure they have everything they would ever need, Opidum has added some key components at their underground facility. There is a garden that is grown using artificial lights, which are programmed to imitate the sun as closely as possible. Of course, they need to include a spa, a swimming pool, and a library. But no doomsday shelter for the super rich would be complete without installing a theater complex complete with every movie ever made. The underground compound will also contain the basics, such as a medical facility and all the necessary supplies to keep the community healthy, but it also includes custom vaults so the residents can store their private art collections and any other valuables they don't want to lose during the end of the world. There will also be a full-service restaurant and a fully stocked wine cellar to keep everyone happy and drunk. The price tag for reserving a spot at Alpidum is not advertised, which means you'd have to contact them directly to find out, and if you have to ask the price, you probably can't afford it. Obviously, this is not how most people prep for doomsday, but when you have a ton of money, you can go all out preparing for the end of the world. However, there are people who do some pretty insane things to prepare for doomsday even if they don't have a huge budget. One former high school teacher in Ontario named Bruce Beach came up with an ingenious doomsday plan using recycled school buses. He first started planning for doomsday in the 1960s during the Cuban Missile Crisis, but even after we made it through the Cold War, he continued to build onto his doomsday plan. Beach found the best way to utilize abandoned school buses from the school district he worked at was to repurpose them as a doomsday bunker. He would purchase them from the town and bury them underground. As Beach collected more and more buses, he connected them like Legos, forming a labyrinth of tunnels. In the 1980s, he finished his school bus shelter and named it Arc 2. The whole complex is made up of 42 school buses that are completely buried underground with a secure opening to enter the doomsday bunker. He was so proud of his accomplishment, he even rented out his school bus shelter to people to stay in like an Airbnb. Arc 2 has a kitchen, a shower, and several bedrooms. One unique trait that Beach has that many doomsday preppers don't is generosity. He even has said that people have called him up just to ask if he had a space in Arc 2 for them if the world came to an end. He always responded that he did. This might be a uniquely Canadian trait as it's very rare for someone to offer shelter to others in their doomsday shelter. One man in China is taking a different approach using the Arc name. Instead of reusing buses, he's taken a page out of the Bible. Lu Zhenghai has spent $160,000 on materials to build up a ship reminiscent of Noah's Ark, except a better name in this case might be Zhenghai's Ark. The reason he's spending so much money on the ship is to protect his family from the worldwide flood he sees coming. To be fair, sea levels are rising, and depending on where you live, there's a chance you could be flooded out of your home. This is especially true for island nations and coastal communities, but Zhenghai wants to make sure he and his family are prepared just in case the entire planet floods. He's building a ship around 65 feet long that weighs 80 tons. His materials of choice are steel and wood to construct the hull of the ship. The inside will then be split into different rooms and sections that will turn the boat into a comfortable house in which his family can live. Another man in China is preparing for the short-term impacts of Doomsday. He's doing this in a pretty crazy way by creating giant yellow balls. Yang Zhongfu has constructed several massive balls made out of steel that are 13 feet in diameter. Each one supposedly can withstand pretty much any type of disaster. He calls these spheres an Atlantis. They weigh around 3 tons and have been painted bright yellow. 
Zhang Fu claims the design is optimal for surviving sudden global catastrophes such as volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. The way the spheres are shaped allows them to float, roll, or even withstand the force of an explosion. One main problem with the Atlantis balls is that anyone inside would get tossed around. This led the Zhang Fu equipping each metal ball with seat belts. He even claims that the materials used would help someone survive a nuclear blast from a distance. If you were in the ball right next to where a nuclear device was detonated, the giant yellow ball would not save you. But if you were a little ways away, it could protect you from the shockwave as it rolled to safety. Zhang Fu has created a way to prepare for any disaster, but in a different way than many preppers have. His plan is to survive the initial cause of doomsday and then leave his Atlantis structure to try to survive in a post-apocalyptic world. This is different from many doomsday preppers, as he isn't in it for the long haul. He just wants to survive in the short term. Maybe his thought is that if the Atlantis balls couldn't save him from whatever doomsday scenario ends the world, there wouldn't be much left in the apocalypse to look forward to anyway. It is insane how much time and money some people spend on a doomsday plan. This couldn't be more true than one Australian man who's created his safe space high up in the mountains. In Australia, a man named Robert Bast has spent over $350,000 on survival equipment to make sure he's prepared for doomsday. That is a crazy amount of money to spend on supplies if you're assuming the world is going to end, but most of what he stockpiles is expected, such as food, water, and gas. Unlike many other doomsday preppers, Bast isn't building his shelter underground. Instead, he'll be traveling into the mountains for Armageddon. In fact, Bast has built a safe house 1,500 feet above sea level. He makes test runs periodically with his family to ensure they're ready in worst-case scenarios. Bast, his wife, and his kids pile into a pickup truck and speed up the mountain to where safety awaits. So it would seem that in the land down under, the doomsday safe houses are not always down underground. Even more surprising than spending tons of money or living in a school bus is what some people collect to prepare for doomsday. You wouldn't think that bees would be the animal of choice when preparing for the end of the world, but one New England woman disagrees. Kathy Harrison, also known as Doris Day of Doom, is stockpiling honeybees for the end of the world. She collects the bees with her husband and makes sure they're kept happy and healthy. The craziest part is what they plan to do with them when the world ends. When asked this question, Harrison tells people that bees are an excellent source of food. Their honey can be used to make all kinds of nutritious meals, not to mention in dire straits the bees themselves can be eaten as a small source of protein. The bees' wax can also be used as a preservative, which can keep vegetables and fruits fresher longer, but there is another, more unique use that the Harrisons have planned for their hives. When the world comes crashing down, they plan to use the bees and their honey as a commodity to barter with. Since money will have no value in a post-apocalyptic world, food and other important resources will be key. The bees can replenish their own numbers while simultaneously producing honey that can be bartered with. Basically, the Harrisons are using their bees as a cash cow. This will only work if the other people play nice after the world comes to an end. If New England turns into a Mad Max scenario, the bees will probably not be very useful. Some preppers around the world have created their doomsday plan to include no one else but themselves and their immediate family. There will be no bartering and no communicating with others. This led one man to make the basement of his Las Vegas home his own private indoor world. This doomsday prepper has recreated a quiet neighborhood right under his house. It comes with everything, from an in-ground pool to a grassy lawn, and to be fair, the setup seems pretty relaxing, even if it is intended for the end of the world. The tiny houses in the bunker are just a single room, but they have lovely sliding glass doors, and inside is everything someone could need to ride out the apocalypse. Even if the housemates don't get along from time to time, they can escape each other by wandering through the small park and staring up at a fake sky. Honestly, if the world has to end, this might not be the worst place to spend the rest of your life. The only thing better than preparing for doomsday with a small village in your basement is by making your entire house a bunker, and that is exactly what one architect did in Poland. This home is called The Safe House and is located just outside of Warsaw, Poland. It was created by Robert Konieczki of KWK Proms as an impenetrable fortress to protect whoever is inside from whatever doomsday befalls the world, including a zombie apocalypse. The structure looks more like a giant concrete block than an actual house when it's in lockdown. It has no windows or doors and is completely isolated from the outside world. But when the coast is clear and doomsday is over, the walls slide back, allowing anyone inside to have a beautiful view of the property. However, when the walls are open, the house is still protected by a solid concrete wall that lines the entire property. The cool thing is that if at any point the people inside the safe house feel unsafe, they can put the structure back in lockdown with the touch of a button. Inside is everything someone would want to keep them busy during the apocalypse. This might be the holy grail of doomsday homes. If you thought the previous preppers were crazy, you haven't seen anything yet. A company called Vivos X Point has an insane plan for some open land in South Dakota. Vivos X Point doesn't plan to build just one bunker 
or even a few bunkers to prepare for the end of the world. Instead, Vivo Sex Point is building an entire underground city of 575 bunkers to house the last remaining survivors of Doomsday. There are entire towns with less than 575 structures, meaning this underground Doomsday city will be bigger than many other South Dakota communities. This will be a no-frills underground city providing only the necessities. However, they do build to suit their customers' needs. Vivo Sex Point has drawn up four different floor plans that a resident can choose from, so there is something for everyone. It would seem that the people in this region of the United States take Doomsday very seriously, and now they can be surrounded by like-minded individuals in Vivo Sex Point Underground City. Somewhere between a single hidden bunker and a full-blown city of Doomsday preppers, there is the Survival Condo. This behemoth underground structure looks like a reverse skyscraper. The building descends 201 feet into the earth and can house thousands of people when the end of the world comes. So this might be a good opportunity for many doomsday preppers in the region to explore their options about post-apocalyptic living. The structure itself will be housed in a missile silo that was constructed during the Cold War. It will have 15 floors with all the amenities someone could hope for at the end of the world. The plan includes a dog walking area, a shooting range, and rock climbing walls. Of course, there will be indoor pools with a water park. There will also be restaurants and bars as well as medical facilities to care for everyone in the survival condo. The architects plan to create several redundant power storage systems and water filtration systems. The hydroponic system will grow plants using artificial lights to create a long-lasting supply of food. The plan is to be able to sustain the inhabitants of survival condo for five years without opening the hatch. This would be a much more bougie doomsday setup than your average bunker. The structure won't be for everyone, though. Doomsday preppers who have signed on for the project must share their underground condo complex with others, so it is not for preppers who are solely concerned about only saving themselves. On the plus side, the survival condo will be built deep enough and surrounded by the silo's protective covering, allowing it to survive a nuclear blast 100 times more powerful than the atomic bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki. There is a less expensive option for doomsday preppers in Indiana if they want to be surrounded by a small community of like-minded individuals but can't afford the expensive costs of an underground condominium. Vivos, Indiana is a communal doomsday bunker that feels much more like a large office with some bedrooms than a luxurious bunker. It houses 80 people and is supposed to be able to sustain them for about a year. Everything is shared in this bunker, so it will be imperative everyone gets along. The bedrooms are separated, but the only thing that fits in them is a bed. The common room serves as the main areas of the complex, where meals are eaten and entertainment is enjoyed. What makes Fifos, Indiana different from other bunkers and doomsday facilities is that everything is shared. Like other doomsday communities, this could lead to problems, but the small size and lack of privacy in Vivos, Indiana could exacerbate those issues. This is just another example of the crazy ways people are planning to live out their remaining days after doomsday. Everyone is different and everyone will want something different at the end of the world. Most people find planning for the apocalypse crazy and not worth doing since there's a decent chance they won't make it. For doomsday preppers who want to live in a community but don't have the money to afford some of those uber expensive options, Vivos, Indiana might be a perfect fit. For those people who are constantly afraid of doomsday happening even when they're on vacation, there's a special hotel just for them. The Felsen Hotel La Claustra is located inside of a mountain. That's right, for doomsday preppers and adventurers alike, there's a hotel that is within a mountain. This is appealing for anyone who thinks Armageddon might be just around the corner. In the eyes of doomsday prepper, Felsen Hotel La Claustra is a much safer option than a Four Seasons or Marriott during the end of the world. The structure used to be a Swiss military fortress built specifically to keep people safe inside it. However, this military base has been completely remodeled into a luxurious hotel with rock walls and comfy rooms. For people who want a vacation away from prepping but still want to be secure, they can sleep at Felsen Hotel La Claustra, eat in their main dining room located in a large cavern in the mountain, and walk around the property using subterranean tunnels. In the winter, the entrance is covered in snow, which is beautiful but also a reminder of how remote this hotel can be. Ideally, if the world was about to end and you were on vacation, this is where you'd want to be staying. Perhaps the most impressive and important doomsday preppers of all are those who work at the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. This facility houses a backup supply of all the different plants that humans rely heavily on. This means that if all the crops were wiped out around the world by a global catastrophe, the Svalbard Global Seed Vault would be able to restart those food sources by using the seeds contained within their facility. This vital bunker is located at the furthest northern point that commercial airlines can fly, making it both remote and accessible. The vault itself is located 100 meters into the side of a mountain to ensure everything inside is secure. The environment in Svalbard also has a low humidity and is not anywhere near fault lines, which means it's safe from earthquakes. The entranceway and the vault are located well above sea level to help protect it from rising sea levels, 
And of course, being that far north means the region is incredibly cold. In fact, the permafrost located in the region creates a natural freezer to keep the seeds frozen for future use. Obviously, those seeds could only be used if the planet wasn't irradiated by nuclear fallout or completely flooded like in Noah's Ark story. But if a global catastrophe occurred and we needed to start from scratch, the Svalbard Global Seed Vault would have the tools to get our farming going again. When you think about it, Svalbard might not be the ideal location for every doomsday prepper, but it is perfect for storing the seeds for all the plants on the planet. A good indication of how crazy preppers can be is in an area found at the local survival surplus store. Owners of these outlets have heard and seen pretty much every insane doomsday prepper in their general vicinity. In Quebec, Canada, one survival store owner noticed that whenever there is political conflict, even if it's just during a divided election, people start to stack up on doomsday supplies. This isn't surprising as it would only take one nation with nuclear capabilities to start an all-out war ending in a nuclear holocaust. But other events can trigger the insane tendencies of doomsday preppers even if it's nowhere near them. For example, when the Fukushima nuclear disaster occurred in Japan, people in Quebec started to prep for the end of the world. This is interesting because Quebec is very far away from Japan. However, the shop owner noticed that people almost immediately started buying anti-radiation pills, gas masks, and chemical protection suits after the news broke about the disaster. Loading up on all those things because a nuclear reactor melted down on the other side of the world seems extreme, but nothing could have been more normal to the Quebec doomsday preppers. Florida is a unique place. The beliefs of the people who live there can vary, but some are wildly different from the rest of the United States. That's why an interesting pattern emerges in the doomsday prepping community whenever a Democrat has a chance of getting elected. Survival store owners notice that when it isn't an election year and business seems to go on as usual, there aren't many strange purchases in the store, and customers tend to buy regular doomsday equipment like fire starters, water purifiers, and first aid supplies. But whenever there's a chance that a Democrat will become president, there's an increase in a rather unsettling commodity. Gun purchases increase drastically at Florida survival shops whenever an election cycle favors a Democratic candidate or if the race is close. This is surprising, because regulars at survival stores who buy a lot of equipment tend to be doomsday preppers, not anti-government revolutionaries. Then again, sometimes those things can go hand in hand depending on where you are. One store owner noticed this crazy tendency and chalked it up to an odd idiosyncrasy in the region. For the most part, doomsday preppers in Florida seem to be similar to those in many other parts of the world. They buy a lot of supplies during hurricane season or if there's a conflict between major countries in the world. But for some reason, US politics is a driving force behind doomsday preppers loading up on firearms, which is not seen in many other regions. This is a slightly scary thought, as if you put together all the preppers and their firearms, they would have a decent-sized militia. Luckily, the world is still turning and there's a relative peace in the United States, but who knows what'll happen next election cycle if the Floridian preppers get angry. Surprisingly, Canadian doomsday preppers tend to be influenced by politics as well, except it isn't their own politics, but those of the US. Except in Canada, the doomsday preppers don't go out and buy a bunch of guns. Instead, they load up on food. There seems to be more fear of economic collapse by Canadian doomsday preppers than war during United States election cycles. Also, Canadians don't appear to be as interested in building concrete bunkers to ride out an apocalypse. Survival store owners admit that their customer base increases when things get tumultuous in the US or during a catastrophe somewhere else in the world. However, there is a very low demand for a fallout shelter buried deep underground compared to other parts of the world. Maybe this is because there is so much undeveloped land that it's super easy to just escape into the wilderness. Or perhaps Canadians just feel secluded cabins on the fringes of civilization work just as well as anything dug under the ground. In France, doomsday prepper stores sell slightly different supplies. This is because of the end of the world fears are different than those in North America. Over the past 10 years, more and more Europeans are embracing the survivalist lifestyle. This is slightly different from doomsday prepping, but some see it as complimentary. According to survival shop owners, politics tend to play less of a role in what preppers buy than fears around the damage done to our planet by pumping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These fears influence what doomsday preppers buy in this part of the world. They focus on purchasing water purification systems and wilderness supplies over firearms. This is probably due to the fact that you can't shoot climate change or wage war against it using guns. This brings us to somewhat of a conundrum. People who take doomsday prepping seriously would not want to divulge their secrets. One of the key tenets of doomsday prepping is not telling people where your supplies are or how you plan to ride out the apocalypse. This is especially true if you have a hidden bunker somewhere filled with all those things you need to survive. So there are probably hundreds or even thousands of serious preppers that fly below the radar. Maybe they buy their supplies from different places, so they aren't seen as regular anywhere. 
or maybe they have other people they trust to buy them supplies. One thing is for sure though, true professional preppers are not broadcasting their location or doing interviews about their end of the world plan if they're trying to outlast everyone else. Now watch how to build a World War III bomb shelter, or check out This Is How the World Ends.